Did you know that in 2021, 7.9 million people in the U.S. moved to a different state, up from 7.4 million people two years earlier? Additionally, people moving from one state to another accounted for nearly 19% of all movers, indicating that moving between states may be becoming increasingly popular. But whether you're thinking of moving to a new state for work, to raise a family, retire, or some other reason, you have 50 states to choose from, so it can be a little overwhelming. So we've compiled a list of states you'd likely be better off steering clear of due to a number of factors such as cost of living, access to healthcare and education, job markets, crime, quality of life, and more. So today on Across the Globe, we're going to be looking at the worst states to live in America for 2024. Before we start, keep in mind that this list is not exhaustive and it definitely doesn't mean that everything about these states is bad. That being said, the data indicates that the states on this list have a ways to go in terms of improving the quality of life for their residents. Let's dive in. Number 9. West Virginia When U.S. News & World Report released their list of best and worst states to live in the U.S., West Virginia came out ranked number 46. It ranked particularly poorly when it comes to the state's healthcare, infrastructure, education, and its economy. Specifically, it landed worst in the nation in terms of healthcare and infrastructure, and number 47 for both education and economy. WalletHub found similar findings on their own list of best and worst states to live in, though they placed West Virginia at number 41 overall. And while WalletHub ranked the state extremely high at number two for affordability, they ranked it 45 for economy and education and health, and 43 for overall quality of life. Despite West Virginia being relatively affordable compared to other states in the nation, that low cost of living may not be enough to offset the ways in which the state lacks. When it comes to healthcare, for instance, not only did it rank poorly in terms of things like adult wellness visits, but West Virginia residents themselves often suffer from poor health outcomes. For instance, the state has a greater percentage of its population suffering from multiple chronic conditions than other states. Moving on to West Virginia's economy, it fares poorly across the board when taking into consideration factors like economic activity, economic health, and innovation potential. In terms of infrastructure, a full 20% of the state's bridges, 75% of its dams, and 31% of its public roads are considered to be in poor condition. Finally, the state struggles when it comes to educational outcomes, with schools coping with issues like underfunding and understaffing, and poor overall student performance. Number 8. Alabama On its annual list of worst states in the nation to live in, CNBC ranked Alabama number 4 and gave it what they call a life health and inclusion score of 86 points out of 350, or a letter grade of an F. The state's low points in this area primarily come in the form of lack of voting rights and worker protections, including protections against discrimination. It also ranked poorly according to other sources, with education, healthcare, and its natural environment receiving low scores. When it comes to its education, WalletHub listed Alabama as number 46 for its overall quality of education and 44 and 39 for educational attainment and quality of education, respectively. The former takes into consideration things like the share of adults who have at least a high school diploma and the share of adults who have a bachelor's degree or higher while the latter looks at factors like the quality of the school system and public high school graduation rates. Healthcare is also an issue here, with many adults lacking health insurance. For instance, as of August 2023, Alabama is one of only 10 states in the country that has not expanded Medicaid coverage for those who either don't have children or don't have a disability. Finally, U.S. News & World Report notes that Alabama's natural environment can contribute to a poor quality of life for those who live here, ranking it at number 47 out of 50, with 11 for air and water quality and 48 for pollution. 
the state's high levels of pollution and, in particular, industrial toxins, are about 1.6 times the national average. Number 7. South Carolina You might be surprised to see South Carolina on this list. After all, it's often considered to be a great place to retire or raise a family, especially given its affordable cost of living and great weather. However, recent data seems to indicate otherwise, with South Carolina popping up on a majority of lists we see of the worst places to live in America. A key part of this is its lack of worker protections, with South Carolina having the fifth highest rate of fatal work injuries out of any other state in the U.S. Additionally, the state has a violent crime rate and property crime rate that puts it in the top 10 in the nation. Also, South Carolina's education systems fare poorly compared to the rest of the country. Not only is the high school graduation rate below the national average by about 4 percentage points, but national math scores are below national levels and the average debt at graduation is above average. As if all that weren't enough, residents of South Carolina also have some of the country's highest debt-to-income ratios. Number 6. Arkansas Arkansas suffers from a high violent crime rate and has the fifth highest violent crime rate in the entire country at 671.9 violent crime incidents per 100,000 people. According to Wise Voter, the reasons for this are largely because the state has a high percentage of low-income residents and has many incidents of drug abuse. To put the rates of drug use into context, the drug overdoses have increased in the state of Arkansas from 12.6 per 100,000 people in 2011, all the way to 22.3 per 100,000 people in 2021. In addition to crime being an issue here, the state also struggles with education, healthcare, and overall quality of life. When it comes to education, while the state has slightly above average rates of high school graduation, its test scores fall below national levels. Specifically, 81% of the state's 8th graders were found to lack proficiency in math. Healthcare-wise, the state has 13.2% of people without health insurance, compared to 12.2% nationally. And according to U.S. News and World Report, the state has above-average rates of preventable hospital admissions, which typically indicate a lack of high-quality outpatient or primary care. When it comes to quality of life, WalletHub ranked Arkansas 48 out of all 50 states according to factors like average number of hours worked per week, commute time, and access to public transportation. Additionally, economic well-being is an issue here, with 22% of children living in poverty and 30% of parents in Arkansas lacking stable employment. Number 5. New Mexico like Arkansas, New Mexico also has a high violent crime rate with the second highest rate in the nation. This is attributable to a variety of factors including a large proportion of low-income residents, drug trafficking, and gang activity. In addition to its violent crime, New Mexico also has the third highest poverty rate in the nation with an estimated 17.6% poverty rate as of the latest census data. However, Recent data suggests that this rate may be even higher, at as high as 19.1%. High poverty rates have also been linked to poor educational outcomes and, in particular, low literacy rates. Unfortunately, New Mexico's children have even higher poverty rates, with 28% of children under 5 here living in poverty and 25% of children under 18 living in poverty. When it comes to educational performance, only 76% of 4th graders and 79% of 8th graders are proficient in reading and over 25% of high school students do not graduate on time. Finally, Healthcare is also an issue in New Mexico, with 14.4% of the state without health insurance, compared to 12.2% nationwide. The state's healthcare is also expensive when compared to the overall cost of living. For instance, while the state's cost of living is below average, its healthcare costs are about average, meaning people are paying a premium for healthcare compared to their typical cost of living. Number 4. Oklahoma 
Speaking of healthcare, Oklahoma is one of the states that fares the worst in the country when it comes to quality of health and health care. Oklahomans have the second highest percentage of people without health insurance in the country and also have one of the highest rates of drug abuse in the nation. Specifically, a whopping 20.2% of people here are without health insurance, almost 1.7 times higher than the national average. Additionally, the rate of preventable hospital admissions is well above national numbers. Oklahoma also struggles when it comes to crime, having the 14th highest violent crime rate in the country, with a rate of 458.6 per 100,000 people. Its overall crime rate is also high. Notably, there are high rates of property crime here. Lastly, if you're looking for some place to raise a family, Oklahoma may not be your best bet. At least, that's according to a WalletHub study that ranked Oklahoma number 43 in terms of best and worst states to raise a family. Specifically, they ranked Oklahoma 48, 43, and 40 when it comes to health and safety, socioeconomics, and family fun, respectively. For context, health and safety is ranked according to factors like the share of uninsured children and pediatricians per capita while socioeconomics takes into consideration things like the share of two-parent families and share of families living in poverty. Finally, Family Fun looks at factors like the number of attractions and number of fitness and recreation centers per capita. I will note that Oklahoma fared slightly better when it comes to education and childcare and affordability, but still not great, as WalletHub gave the state rankings of 39 and 31, respectively. Number three, Louisiana. One area that Louisiana really struggles in is childcare and education. In fact, out of the state's 4.6 million residents, there are only a total of 76 licensed childcare facilities. I should mention that the state is currently trying to take action to change this, but it will not be solved within a matter of mere days or maybe even years for that matter. Additionally, both its high school graduation rate and test scores are below the national average. For this reason and more, U.S. News & World Report ranked Louisiana the worst state in the nation to live in. In fact, Louisiana unfortunately ranks pretty poorly across the board in terms of crime, its economy, and infrastructure, among other factors. In terms of crime, for instance, Louisiana has the seventh highest level of violent crime in the nation, with a rate of 639.4 per 100,000 people. This is mostly due to high poverty rates and drug and gang activity. Additionally, U.S. News ranked Louisiana's corrections outcomes the worst in the nation. Economy-wise, Louisiana has a job growth rate that's half of the national average, and WalletHub ranked its economy fourth worst in the country, according to factors like unemployment and underemployment rates, and share of people living in poverty. Finally, Louisiana's infrastructure is struggling, with one report saying that the state has some of the worst roads in the country. For instance, 23% of its roads and 9% of its bridges are considered to be in poor shape. Number two, Alaska. Did you know that Alaska's violent crime rate is the highest in the nation? That's right, Alaska has a violent crime rate of 837.8 per 100,000 people, largely due to issues like substance abuse. Additionally, despite its remote location, Alaska's cost of living is actually above the national average. Specifically, its cost of living is 24.4% higher than the country's average, with healthcare in particular being expensive at 49.8% above the average. If you're looking to move your family or start a family somewhere new, Alaska may also not be your best bet. For instance, the state's high school graduation rate is the lowest on this list at 79.1% compared to the nation's 86.5%. National test scores are also below the average. Finally, as WalletHub notes, Alaska's quality of life may not be great for the average person. Specifically, they ranked it last out of all 50 states when it comes to factors including average hours worked, average commute time, restaurants, and cultural attractions per capita, and weather. Number 1. Mississippi 
Unsurprisingly, number one on our list is Mississippi. On WalletHub's list, it was ranked last for both economy and education and healthcare, and second last for its quality of life. It fared slightly better for safety at 31 and was ranked seven overall in terms of affordability. Looking at its economy, Mississippi has seen a negative job growth in recent years, which is obviously not a good thing. While the national average for job growth is 0.2%, in Mississippi, it's negative 0.2%. In other words, the state is seeing a decline in job opportunities. Furthermore, its business environment, including factors like its business creation rate and number of patents granted, is among the worst in the nation. Health-wise, a full 17.7% of people here are without health insurance, which is significantly higher than the 12.2% nationally. Furthermore, there are 3,448 preventable hospital admissions per 100,000 patients, compared to 2,781 per 100,000 nationwide. What about the worst countries to live in?